get asked all the time, why do I do it? Why do I compete? What what drives me to to go to waters that I'm unfamiliar with, to challenge some of the best in the world in their backyard? You know, when all of the odds are against us, what makes us want to go there? It's all the experiences in life. You know, I want to look back at life and be like, you know, I did this and I tried that and I, I went there and I did that. Um, but for me, at the end of the day, it's the stories that I'm going to get to tell my daughter and to hopefully get her interested in the ocean and get her interested in traveling and seeing much of the land um, while on Earth. I mean, as a father, that's, that's all you can do is spark interest and passion. That's one part of the drive, and another part of the drive is I'm a competitive person at nature. You know, at, at my core, I'm competitive. You know, and that's that's the key in spearfishing. It's such a an individual sport. You know, it's all about oh, what place did you get? What kind of fish have you shot? What's your biggest fish? It's not what was the biggest fish shot on the boat today, or what what did you guys team place? You know, and that's the biggest challenge is with Ryan Myers. He's become a great friend, you know, and he's a very, very, very talented spear fisherman and free diver. You know, I'm his biggest cheerleader. You know, he does things in the water that I can only dream and fathom about. You know, I see that drive and it pushes me, you know, as much of a cheerleader as I am um, of his and a fan of his. I, in the same breath, don't want to beat anyone more badly in a competition than him. Me and Justin have been traveling and competing and diving together for the last few years. He hunts the way a hunter hunts on land, but underwater. He uses everything as something to hide behind, as you know, a place to put up an ambush. Whereas, I'm just now starting to learn how to hunt. Justin has hunted like this his entire life. This is how you have to hunt in Hawaii to get those small, really smart fish. He really is the best diver I've ever seen. It made me understand that I still have a lot to learn. And if I want to be the best in the world, I've got to learn how to hunt in all these different conditions, different formats. And that's why we've come here to New Zealand. This place has very different conditions than we're used to. It's got cold, dirty water, and sometimes very rough. And the underwater landscape really mirrors the landscape on land. And it, it's really raw and rugged underwater. Lots of kelp and greenery and surgy waves. And, and in this environment, totally different fish live. And that's the big name of the game here learn what these new fish do, where they live, and then how to hunt them. At 
this level, everyone we're competing against are amazing divers. And what it really comes down to is strategy. Do I go left? Do I go right? Who's more prepared than everybody else? We're not going to have the edge of local knowledge. We're only going to have what we learn in two weeks of preparation. So any little piece of gear or equipment or technique that we can use that they don't have, we'll take it. And that's really where the hex technology comes in. It's something that gives me that extra second to get closer to my fish. And on top of that, simply knowing that the suit is blocking my full energy signal, it gives me a serious mental advantage over any of the other competitors not wearing the hex technology. You know, the day and the hours prior to the start of competition, I just get excited. I get so excited, I gotta poop. If I don't have a good poop, it's not good. But it's that excitement that, oh, I love it. That's what keeps me coming back. You know, and, uh, but, you know, the excitement all disappears as soon as I slip into the water. As soon as I slip into the water, I get to my good place, I get to my calm place, and I just gotta do what I do. On competition day, I'm trying to kill every eligible fish that's worth points. But what people don't see is the weeks and sometimes months that we spent in that same location, diving those same waters, just looking at these same fish. And we'll look at them, we will figure out where they live and what they do and where they sleep at night, and often give them funny names. And then on tournament day, try and come back to them. But 9% of them, we'll never see again. So these crates of dead fish you see at the end of the day is such a small part of what a competition is all about. One of the coolest things about these events are the incredible divers that you get to hang out with. I mean, people that were heroes and legends of mine I'm now playing darts with and drinking around a table with. and just getting to hear these stories you would never you never get to hang out with these people unless you were here came to these competitions on top of all this is the travel and that's really what I want to do anyways I want to see the world my own way as much of it as I can and on my own terms. I want to float around from destination to destination, places where people spend their whole life trying to get to, and that's just another stop on my year. And every single day I get to do what I love the most. 